Hello and welcome to another edition of Animal Matters. I'm Grant Lingell. And I'm Glenn Greenwald. So, Glenn, animal rights is an important issue to both of us. But why do you think that it's not an important issue to so many people, even people that do care about animals and do love animals? What's stopping so many people from truly caring about animal rights in general? I think part of it is is what we've discussed previously, that the true horrors of the industry have been kept largely hidden by design and therefore the true atrocities being committed are unknown to many people who would be moved if they knew about them. But I think there's actually something deeper, which is a belief that has been ingrained or inculcated in a lot of people that isn't necessarily a conscious belief, but that is something that they've come to embrace perhaps subliminally, which is the idea that even if you like animals, even if you think dogs are nice, animal life is inherently less valuable than human life. And that, in fact, if you look at nature, it seems as though animal life exists primarily, if not exclusively, to be a means to the end of human advancement. That they're here for our food, for us to kill for enjoyment, that historically and traditionally humans have survived by slaughtering animals and then eating them, and that either religion or God or the natural order has decreed that animal life has less value or even no value as compared to human life. And I think a lot of people have internalized that as a philosophical conception. Is animal life the exact moral and ethical equivalent, does it have the same value as human life? Or do we continue to believe that animal life, even if it has some value, we love our dogs, monkeys are cute, animal life is still inherently less valuable than human life? What is your view on that and do we need to answer that question? Well, I think every living being has the right to live and you know, pursue whatever it is that that being is pursuing, whether it's happiness or procreation or just another meal or whatever. I look at a pig the same way I look at a dog, a happy, cuddly, lovely little creature that just wants to be free. And so, I mean, I, me personally, I believe that all life is valuable. I don't see humans as superior. We might be more intelligent. We might be logical thinkers. It's an argument about intellect, that human beings are self-conscious of our life and our death and therefore our existence, mm -hmm. that what human beings are capable of intellectually is so much higher than what other non-human species are capable of, that that in itself demonstrates the inherent superiority of the value of our lives as opposed to other animals. This whole premise, first of all, of whether or not it's even true that humans are more intelligent than non-human species because, of course, there are things humans are capable of doing that no other species can. There are things, though, that other species are capable of that humans are incapable of. My dogs can recognize things by their smell yeah. that I can't begin to comprehend or through their hearing or, even more importantly, through their empathetic connection to other beings and to other people. Mm -hmm. So I think the whole premise that human beings are more intelligent than other species is highly dubious, mm -hmm. unless you look at a very narrow kind of intelligence. And in general, people tend to value types of intelligence that they possess more than less. But then I think there's another question, which is, even if you assume that humans have superior intellect, why does it mean our lives are more valuable? Yeah. Right? So if there's a uh, race from another planet that ends up visiting Earth that is more intelligent than us, or if artificial intelligence ends up with a higher cognitive ability, which is almost certain to happen in the relatively near then future, where, we, then where do we stand? What's the moral yeah. argument for why they can't just eat us or destroy us? What moral or ethical ground do we have for saying that we, for claiming certain rights um, not to be abused or exploited or slaughtered or extinguished, by these more intelligent species. Yeah, I mean, this idea, like I mentioned, of speciesism and the human supremacy. I believe it has a lot to do with what we're taught growing up. And, you know, we're taught that this planet is ours. 
and that everything is here for us for the taking which is ridiculous if you see somebody in the street kicks a dog it's going to create immense outrage right um in fact there was this case in brazil about a month and a half ago where the security guard outside of a supermarket just violently slaughtered a dog a stray dog and i think he ended up getting arrested public outrage public outrage so why are we so outraged when we see a dog being abused or injured or killed but we're fine with pigs and chickens and turkeys and goats being bred into existence or cows for no reason other than to be abused, tortured, slaughtered. Yeah. What is the goal then of the animal rights movement? Is it to contest this fundamental premise, namely this view that, well, what you called speciesism, this view that animal life is less valuable than human life? Should the view, the goal of animal rights movement and activists be to combat that mm -hmm. by saying this premise is false and anything that is rested in this right immoral or should it be this idea that no we're not about eliminating the moral worth that that species are assigned we're instead about something much less ambitious which is we just want to improve animal welfare in an ideal world which this isn't you know i would say you know, the end goal and the fight should be to end animal cruelty altogether and work to abolish animal farming and animal consumption and use by humans. To me, that's the end goal. To many people within the movement, that's the end goal. But I don't see why there can't be two roads running in parallel. But there's going to have to be steps. Should animal rights activists always begin with the premise that anything short of the end of speciesism continues to be immoral, even if improvements on an incremental basis are possible. Ending speciesism and establishing that all living beings are equal and deserve the same rights and the ability to live a free life and to love and survive without being bred into existence and tortured and suffering until imminent slaughter yeah i mean that's how it should be i mean i do think that people do want to end factory farming i think that's one of the main goals and i think the new movement with the clean meat idea which is lab cultured meat which is identical to meat without the animal farming aspect will be able to change it and you know make it so factory farming and animal farming eventually does not need to exist we're not just about improving animal welfare we are about eliminating the view that says it's permissible morally to treat human to treat animals as objects right. to be exploited or have their lives ended for the pleasure and benefit of humans yeah and it's it's a question i feel like most people even people who have been doing this for a long time or people who are very active within the movement can't answer easily because it is a very difficult question, it's very loaded, and you can, you know, you can see reason on both sides. I think the same is true of animal rights as a movement and a cause. It isn't just about doing better things for the environment or being more compassionate to animals. I think ultimately asking ourselves these kind of questions, why do we slaughter animals? Why do we view ourselves as morally superior as a race, as a nationality, as a species? Just having these kind of discussions, digging deep into our own moral code, ultimately makes us more empathetic, more compassionate, more thoughtful, and improves humanity as a whole. So I think as you can see from this discussion and, and the prior ones, there are all kinds of fascinating ethical, philosophical, moral, political questions that are implicated by our treatment of animal and by the animal rights movement, and a major part of what we hope to do with this series is to speak with you in conjunction with you to explore these issues and to provoke as much thought as possible and we hope we've done that with this episode and look forward to speaking to you the next time